Well, maybe the only news that you have heard this week is bad news about armed Antifa terrorists taking over six blocks of Seattle with the local government standing around with their hands in their pockets. Or the disgusting video of some classless hooligans reenacting the death of George Floyd by having a guy standing on the neck of another as the funeral procession passed by. Or the sheer stupid stuff, such as HBO not airing Gone with the Wind anymore because it depicted a dark time in our history when the scourge of slavery still existed. Or taking the children's TV show Paw Patrol off because one of the dogs was a police dog. But getting less attention is a powerful story of a young white man in, of all places, Selma, Alabama, who was randomly targeted as he was out for a run and shot by a black man. As the young white man was taken into the emergency room, he told the medical staff that he hoped that his being shot would not lead to more violence or hate and that he was praying for the person who shot him to find forgiveness and God's grace. That young husband and father, who I talked to on the phone Wednesday night as he recovered in a Birmingham hospital awaiting another surgery to heal his wounds, showed that the battle in America right now isn't political, economic, or even racial. It's spiritual. There's even more to the story to reveal that God was working in the midst of an evil satanic attack. Two men happened to be near. Each arrived shortly after the shooting and hurried to assist the victim. One of the men was white and had been given a tourniquet just three days before from a friend who told him he ought to keep it in his truck just in case he ever needed it. At the time, he thought it was a pretty strange gift. Three days later, his having it saved a man's life. The hero who actually applied the tourniquet was a black man. He held the victims in his arms on the ground and then continued to hold him in an SUV and said scripture over him as they raced to the hospital. The black man was covered in the blood of the white victim, but race was not a factor in his compassion. And as the story became known, Selma did not erupt in violence or riots as it had in the 1960s. It erupted in prayer and forgiveness. It was not led by a politician or an activist, but by a man in his 30s who ironically is adopting a non-white child. He told his own children that the man who shot him was not a bad man, but a man who God loves who just did a bad thing. His family actually reached out to the family of the man who fired the shots just to affirm God's love and forgiveness. It reminds me of what happened in Charleston, South Carolina, when a crazed white man went to the historic Emanuel AME Church on prayer meeting night. And after being graciously asked to be part of the gathering, he took out a gun and murdered nine black people in cold blood as they were in the act of praying for him. Yet riots, mobs, or mass violent demonstrations didn't materialize in Charleston because the people of that church and even the families of those slain said they didn't want violence. They wanted forgiveness and reconciliation. Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, who lives in Charleston, was on our show to discuss how God intervened to help heal the community. In addition, a daughter of one of the black murder victims was also on our show, you may remember. And she described how she came to forgive the evil white man who shot and killed her father. I gotta be honest, I sat in awe of her as she spoke of God's grace in her own life. Neither of those stories from Charleston or Selma led to hate-filled mobs, burning businesses, looting stores, or even increased violence. They led to godly people leading their communities to ask God to intervene with grace and forgiveness. And the solution wasn't a racial realignment, or social justice, or economic intervention, or even political change. It was divine intervention from which healing came from her. I've not shared the young man's name from Selma out of respect for his family and his privacy, but I do have permission to tell his story and to urge people to not be angry or bitter, but to love, forgive, and exemplify the love of Christ. 
So if America survives these difficult days, it's likely not going to be because of the familiar faces of famous people who lead, but rather because loving, godly people whose names and faces are not familiar to most of us led us by example. Like a black man in Selma who comforted a white man shot by another black man. And we should all surrender to being that kind of Christian who didn't care about the color of skin, but recognized that the color of blood is the same, whether we're white or black. Now, if you're seeing this, I know you've enjoyed that video. I mean, how could you not after all? So you know what you should do? Leave a like, click on the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell next to it so you'll always know when I have another video up for you to enjoy.